teach and urge these things. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions, and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and depraved of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. May God bless the reading of his word. You can be seated. <clears throat> we live in a nation where education is a requirement up to a certain age or a certain level. And where you receive that education is not as strict. You can receive a public um, education, like Haskell ISD or Paint Creek ISD. You can receive a private education um, at a private Christian school or some other private school, or you can receive an education even through homeschool. Um, now, one of the things that all, all three of these um, areas of education have in common is teachers. Every one of them requires teachers. The teacher is to teach the student. Now, some of you who've graduated or maybe not graduated, you just went to school for a little bit, you will recognize um, really good teachers, genuine teachers who are after um, your progress and your achievements in life. These are teachers that made you feel like you could reach the stars. Praise the Lord for those teachers. Amen? But then we had some teachers, or you have a teacher currently that kind of cold, kind of stringent, just to the point kind of rude, and within those teachers, it was not encouraging. It was discouraging. In fact, you hated class, you hated education because of these teachers. There's good teachers, there's bad teachers. It's the same when it comes to the Christian faith, everyone. When it comes to the Christian faith, there are people who teach us about Christ, hopefully. But there can be good teachers, and there can be bad teachers. Paul here and these final, remember, he didn't write chapters, so this is the end of his letter to young Timothy in the city of Ephesus. And he's writing, them, writing him this letter, explaining to him, Timothy, be watchful of the harmful, hurtful, bad teachers. Don't be that type of teacher. Be someone who genuinely cares about the individual, not someone who cares about themselves. That's where we're at within this passage. And so what the call is for you and I this morning through these verses is this. God calls us to have a discernment for the teachers that we listen to. That included me. Now this is more of preaching than teaching. Teaching is a little different. But it can include what we're doing right now. It can include me as a teacher. It can include someone that you're watching on TV or listening to on the radio when they're speaking of Christ. It can include your home church or wherever that is. It can include your Sunday school teacher, your Bible study teacher, your small group teacher, whatever it is. There's teachers all around us. And Paul is reminding us, and God is telling us through the words of Paul, the inspired words of God, is be cautious who you listen to because there are harmful teachers out there. And I call them harmful teachers because they'll bring harm to your life. Now, if you want harm to your life, say amen. That's what I thought. None of us want harm. So then let's look at the scripture. What does God say about harmful teachers and how we can discern how to stay away from these types of teachers? Look, for number one, here's the first point. Harmful teachers act like they are smarter than Jesus. Act like they are smarter than Jesus. Y'all say that with me just to get you going. Ready? Act like they are smarter than Jesus. This is what we see in verses 2 through 4 as we read it. He tells young Timothy, teach and urge these things. If anyone, referring to harmful teachers, if anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up. 
It says with conceit, which we'll look at in just a minute. Well, it's pretty clear here. Here's a first uh, a theological point that we have to understand if you think theology, just an understanding of God, is God is black and white, everyone. It's pretty clear. He says there is a doctrine that Christ has. There is a proclamation that Christ Jesus made. And anything contrary to that puts you under a false teacher and really a harmful teacher. So the rigid faith is a, a good thing, or the, 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 the clarification of the doctrine is a good thing. He says, teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the words of Jesus, this gospel message that Jesus has come to tell us about the kingdom, everyone. Again, this is more than a story. Are y'all listening? This is real historical, reliable events that have happened that Jesus proclaimed this message to say, hey, my father wants a relationship with you. That's why I'm here. Now, a harmful teacher will say, eh, I don't agree with Jesus. Joel Osteen, not necessarily saying he's a false teacher. I'm not saying he's a good teacher. I'm just going to tell you the facts of this event in concern with the doctrine of truth of Christ Jesus. He was in an interview with Larry King. You remember Larry King? Joel Osteen's there. Larry King says, well, 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 Joel, uh, there are Muslims, Buddhists, and people of other faith that don't believe in the Jesus that you believe. Will they go to an eternity with God when they die because they don't believe that? The response of Joel Osteen is this. Well, I don't know. I don't know if they will. Well, Scripture's pretty clear, y'all. Scripture's clear. Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever comes through me will have eternal life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one, no one, no one, no one comes to the Father except by, through me. There's much more sayings about who Jesus is, but it's pretty clear. There's only one way to God, y'all. It's through Jesus. We have these little brown boxes in the back of the room where we put um, our tithe or our gift or a donation, whatever else you want to do. And you putting money in there does not get you closer to God or to heaven. You showing up this morning doesn't get you closer to God or to heaven. Even if you just did what this baptism is, if you just did it in act, not in actual um, true faith, that doesn't get you closer to heaven. There's only one thing that gets us back into the right relationship with God, our Creator, and it's Jesus Christ. Harmful teachers don't agree with this. If anyone teaches a different doctrine, does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ, according with godliness, this is what I call um, teachers with big old heads in our West Texas language, old they got big old heads. Y'all say that with me. Big old heads. Now, doesn't that put a smile on your face? I like that, big old heads. Where do you get that? That's the Josh Fitchett translation of the Bible. That's my name. Verse 4, puffed up with big old heads. Conceit is what some of your Bible says. They have these big heads that say, I don't agree with what Jesus says. They think they're smarter than Jesus. Everyone, these are harmful teachers. If someone has a big old head, not physically, but you know what I mean, then be cautious. Don't listen to them. They think they're smarter than Jesus, and Jesus is the way to life. And so if they're smarter than Jesus, then they're not giving you life. They're giving you death. It is a warning. It is a call for discernment, for understanding, for the people to listen, a, each and every one of us. What does God actually say? So, number two, harmful teachers are airheads. Look at verse four again. Puffed up with conceit. Again, Josh Fitchett translation. They understand nothing. So, they're puffed up with big old heads full of air. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Airhead? Let me give you an example. There's three guys. <clears throat> one's an average Joe. One's an athlete who just works out all the, other t all, all the time. And the other one's this self-proclaimed genius. Just, I, I'm the smartest person in the world. I'm a genius. I know all things. Well, they're all hanging out, and they find themselves in a predicament. They're running away from the cops because they got into an, in an incident. So they're all running away from the cops. 
And they're trying to figure out what do we do, where do we hide, where do we go? And the average Joe sees a doghouse in the backyard. And so he's like, I'm jumping in here. And so he jumps in the doghouse and he's hiding out in the doghouse. The athlete sees the barn right there. So he jumps in the barn and locks the door behind him. He's in the barn. Now the self-proclaimed genius goes into the garage. He's like, where do I hide? What do I do? He sees a potato sack. So he jumps into the potato sack, covers himself up. Well, the cops come by. Where'd those guys go? They go to the doghouse. They kick it. Woof, woof. That's what the guy inside says. Woof, woof. They're like, oh, it's just the dog. Let's keep going. They go to the barn. They try to open the barn. It's, it's shut, locked. And the guy inside goes, moo. Like, oh, it's just cows. So they go to the, to the garage. And they say they see a potato sack. They say, man, that's a weird-shaped potato sack. And they kick it. And the self-proclaimed genius says, potato, potato. <laughs> that's how these harmful teachers are. Just ridiculous. Self-proclaimed, smarter than Jesus, know-it-all types of people. And in fact, it says they know nothing. They understand nothing. Why would you put yourself under a teacher who understands nothing? And really that nothing, reference to Christ, because Christ is everything. So a self-proclaimed big old airhead, big old head, headed airhead, will teach you things that are contrary to God. And in fact, these are harmful to you because it steals and it robs you from two things. Number one, a relationship with God right now. If you read in your Bible, John 10, 10, Jesus says these words, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come so that you may have life. Hear me? He says life. And then he says not just life, but more abundant, an abundant life. Jesus has come to give you and I an abundant life. Now, if you're not living in that abundant life, you're not living in Christ right now. Guys, we start right now in this moment to begin to live in an abundant life, not by the physical riches of the world, we'll get into in a minute, but just by the presence of God and everything that God brings in himself. You look at the disasters or everything that we've gone through in the past two years and you focus in on those things and you say, oh, what are we going to do with our lives? Where is this country going? What do I do with my own individual life? Well, you look to God. And you say, well, God got them out of Egypt as slaves, broke them through uh, this big old uh, river, Nile River, just and took care of them. The big giants, now nah, they're no big deal. God took care of it. And more importantly, the greatest enemy in the world, our own sin, which separates us from God. See, it doesn't say that giants separate us from God. It doesn't say that a big river separates us from God. It doesn't say that slavery separates us from God. It says that our own sin separates us from God. And God meets this need by sending Christ to get rid of that sin so we can have a relationship with God. But the big, old, air-headed teachers, they won't teach these things. And in doing so, they rob you of an abundant life and an eternal life. So, be cautious of who you're listening to. Here, real quickly, harmful teachers are hungry for division. Verse 4 again. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and quarrels about words. Some of us have an unhealthy craving. We have some just cravings in general. Ice cream, chocolate. Some people desire tobacco or alcohol. But then there's an unhealthy craving i got to have two gallons of the Bluebell ice cream. Or i got to have a 30-pack of whatever beer you choose. Or I have to have this much snuff. It becomes an unhealthy craving. Now, these harmful teachers, they don't crave those sorts of things. They crave words of, of Jesus' words. They, they want to listen to the words of Jesus, even though they're anti-Jesus. And here's why. Because they don't agree with him, everyone. So they listen to the words, but they have an unhealthy craving. Meaning, I want to hear this, but why? Why do I want to hear it? So I can disagree. That's why I want to hear these things. I want to disagree. You ever been around an actually person? This is what I mean. You're telling the statement. Man, did you see the football game the other day? And 
so-and-so ran a touchdown. Well, actually, he didn't run a touchdown. He threw a touchdown. Oh, what? He made a touchdown. Okay. Well, it matters. Okay. Man, this weather is wonderful. It's like 70 degrees out here. Well, actually, it's 75. The weatherman was wrong. Did you see that wind? It was like, it was crazy wind the other day. 20. Actually, it was like 50 miles per hour. You ever been around that person? Y'all know it. And if you don't know it, it's you. <laughs> the well actually person. This is that person. The harmful teacher is in a well actually. They have an unhealthy craving for controversy and quarrels about words. It's, now, we, we should study words. We should look at the Bible. We should do word studies on what does this actually mean? What did it mean then? But this is an unhealthy craving for division, for confusion, for slander, for all these things, envy, evil suspicion, and constant friction among the people. It refers back to the original liar. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, or God created Adam and Eve, and let's just pretend this is a fruit tree, okay? And he says, hey, you have the freedom to do whatever, just don't eat from this tree. I, I, I've made you in the image of God, and you're supposed to represent me in this world. And go and spread and multiply across the whole world and represent me. How the world should be. Very good. Well, here comes the serpent. Hey, did God tell you that you're not to eat from this tree? Yeah, because we'll die. Here comes the serpent. Well, actually, you won't die. You'll be like God when you eat. So Adam and Eve, oh, we'll be like God. Wait a minute. God's already proclaimed to you that you're made in the image of God, meaning that you are already like God. But the well actually person came to divide you over a word because he loves this sort of thing. It is a harmful teacher meant to cause harm in your life. So why would we sit under those sorts of teachers? Run. And if they exist in your church, you do church discipline and get them out. But really, you seek to restore them when I mean get them out. You seek to bring them to Christ over and over and over again. But if they're just blatantly against Christ, you recognize that and you call it as it is. One more. Harmful teachers are gold diggers. Verse 5. Constant friction among people who are depraved in mind, deprived of truth. Imagine godliness as a means of gains. You know what a gold digger is? A gold digger is someone who um, recognizes that an individual is rich. Um, it could be by their car, it can be by their clothing, it can be by their style of life. But a gold digger is an individual who then wants to attach themselves to this person to take all the stuff that they have. They're like leeches. They find, oh, this person is, I'm going to go. Hey, good looking. You know, they could be walking. They don't know anything about this person. Um, they, they just look like an average Joe, and they just, I don't care to know anything about them. And they may have a briefcase, and it drops full of money, and then all of a sudden, hey, what's going on? That's a gold digger. Paul tells us that there are gold diggers in, as teachers, that they're really not out for you, they're out for what you can give them, riches. You ever heard these people on television? Hey, you send in your money and just see what comes back. Ding, 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 gold digger. Next time you see that, grandma or grandpa, and your grandkids in the room say, ah, ah, that's a gold digger right there. Let's turn that back. Well, that's not right. They'll be like, what is a gold digger? Well, let me explain it to you. This person just wants your money. And 1 Timothy 6 tells us that these people are harmful to our lives. They're not here to help us. Remember, we're talking about good teachers and bad teachers. This is a bad teacher who wants to steal everything from you. Who are you listening to? People that point you to Christ? Or people that just point you to your best life now? In a sense of, you give money or you do this and it'll be returned to you in this way. Scripture tells us be, be cautious of these types of people. You need teachers that are good for you, like, let's say, John the Baptist. John the Baptist gave it all up. 
He proclaimed to everybody, hey, we need Christ. And I'm here to point you to the Messiah who's coming, the Savior who's coming. I am here to roll out the red carpet, to, to cut down the forest and make a path. Let's, let's come to recognize who Christ Jesus is. Why? Because he gives us life. You know, talk about Christmas. It's the reason for the season. You can open your present, and it's good, and you'll probably play with it for a little while, maybe a few months, then it'll break, and then you'll go seek another present. Or you'll open your presents, and you'll find joy for, ooh, I got this new T-shirt. Then you'll go eat and get a stain on that T-shirt, or the bait for, in my case, the babies will spit up on you and ruin the T-shirt. And then you say, oh, man, I got to get another T-shirt. It's just a temporary spinning wheel, never satisfied. Or you can receive the, Christ, or the, the gift of Christ, which never fades. He told the woman at the well, he says, look, you're going to drink of that water and you're going to be thirsty again because you're not going to be satisfied with the things of this world. He says, but if you come to me, I'm a well, I'm living water springing up. I will fulfill you, everyone. John the Baptist understood that, so he became a teacher, calling people to be baptized, pointing people to Jesus Christ because he says, this is where life's at. It's not found in anything else. Now, we get a slight shift here where Paul addresses what godliness is. In verse 6, he says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment. We want to be more like Jesus. Godliness, everyone. Say, more like Jesus. More like Jesus. We want to be like that. That is what godliness is. We seek to be like Christ. Now, if we do that with contentment, meaning He is it. We're satisfied with just Jesus. That's it. Nothing else. There is great gain in that. There actually is a best life now. There actually is a bunch of riches coming your way if Christ is all that you want. But it may not be the riches that you're seeking, the material things of this world. It may be things like an abundant view on, of peace when things are crazy. Scripture says he will provide peace that surpasses all understanding. Hmm. He will give you joy. Now, we don't seek Jesus for those things. We seek Jesus for Jesus because we love him. That is what a helpful teacher will do. They will point you to Jesus because they love Jesus and they want you to know Jesus. And they know they don't have to point you to peace or joy or love or any of those things. They just have to point you to Jesus and things will be fine. Can I give you an example? <laughs> Sometimes we look at God and we just want stuff and it's because we love ourselves more than we love God did you know that you can even see God and still not choose him still not want him how do you know that the devil the devil was as close to God as anyone would ever be his mighty angel really probably a, a, what you call a, an angel around his throne surrounding his throne he saw God like none of us have ever seen God. But the problem with the devil was that he wasn't looking at how great God was and finding the joy that comes with that and that an expression of praise that says, holy, holy, holy are you, God Almighty. What the devil did was he loved the mirror. Just looked the mirror, man, man you are wonderful. You're, you're awesome. These people need to praise you. Like they praise God. That's what he did. He loved the mirror more than he loved God. And so I, I say that as a warning to you today. You can see who God is, but still choose yourself. You hear me? You have to get your eyes off of yourself and look to Christ. That is what a helpful teacher will do. They won't, they won't point back at you. They will point you to Christ because he is everything. It says verse 7, we brought nothing into the world. We cannot take anything out of the world. It's talking about riches. You know, you seek all this stuff. You seek your boat and your jet ski and your tractor and your truck and your dress, and your makeup and whatever else that you want. You just make a list. You know what? Go home and make a list of just things in your living room. TV, TV stand, couch, carpet, 
lights, paint, decorations, etc., etc., etc. You didn't bring any of that into the world. And you, you're not even satisfied with that. Yeah, this decoration, I need to change it. I don't like it anymore. It needs a new paint color. You know, start watching HDTV. Then you're like, oh, yeah, let's move this wall and let's move this and let's. We're like, no. Man, the best thing you can do is get rid of HGTV. Your honeydew list will shrink like this. I didn't, okay, I did say that. Sorry, ladies. But we're so discontent, are we not? This is an ouch moment for me as I studied this. It says, man, we have way too much. And when we pass, it just sits there. And usually our kids, they don't want, they maybe want one thing, but most of them are like, I don't know what I do with all these shoes. Mom had a lot of shoes. What am I going to do with these? To go to the trash. So why do we spend all our efforts and time and energy on those things? A helpful teacher will say, spend your time seeking God. Because godliness with contentment is great gain. He says in the next one, food and clothing is, is basically all we need. Clothing would include shelter there, some sort of shelter. So you've got to be clothed because of the society we live in, but you need to eat food. You want an example of what this looks like? I think it's a beautiful example. Let me point you back to it. John the Baptist. When you read the scripture, it says this, that John the Baptist clothed himself with, guess what? Camel skin. Camel skin. Just, uh, yeah, I'll take that one. Just, I just need something to clo- cover myself. Cool, camel skin. A leather belt, tied it up. That was his clothes. That's it. And then his food was as he walked down the road, you see a locust, grasshopper, he'd eat it. Grasshopper steak, medium rare. And as he saw honey, he would eat it. That's it. His life was all about Jesus. He knew he wasn't here forever. This is just temporary. So he pointed people to Jesus as a helpful teacher. He didn't care about the clothes. He just something to close them with. And, and then uh, locusts for food, locusts and honey for food. He says that with that, that's it. That's all I need. God called him one of the greatest mans in the world. So what we've done is we ordered a bunch of camel skins and locusts, and they're out there. So when you leave, strip down, put, a, put one on, grab some locusts. We got your lunch covered. What do you think? Well, you know, think about that. If, if we just had a bunch of, you know, in the back we have a fellowship hall, and, and the next time we had a potluck, or pot bless as we call it, um, we just ordered a bunch of locusts. All right, y'all grab a plate, line up. How many of you could honestly say, godliness with contentment is great gain. Let's go. Or how many of you say, see you, I'm out of here. I ain't coming back to this church. <laughs> see, it tells us our priorities. Do we really, can we really, can we really just be about Christ? And more so Paul saying, church, Make sure your teachers aren't hurtful people. Make sure they're helpful people. And a helpful teacher will always point you back to Jesus. That's the fact. He goes on to say, verse 9, riches is a trap. They desire to be rich. They fall into a temptation. Uh, They plunge themselves into ruin and destruction. Um, If you seek to be rich, it is a temptation. It is something that you'll You'll never be satisfied. Even the most wealthiest people in the world are not satisfied. They have tr- literally billions of dollars, and they need more. That's crazy. Which means, you know, if you're seeking that and you're like, man, I'll just take a million and I'll be good. No, you won't. When you get a million, you'll say, man, this, I want another million. That's what will happen. It is a trap. It is a trap. It is a dangerous trap, y'all. So don't seek those things. Seek Christ. It says the love of money is a root of all evil. Not the root. It can be translated, but that doesn't fall um, with the rest of Scripture. It is a root. That word the or a is not, it's not in the Greek. 
So when there's not the word the, it's a. Anyways, it's a root of all evil, meaning it's pretty simple, y'all. You got money? You pretty much do whatever you want, right? I'll go buy an island. I got all the money in the world. That's, that's ridiculous. Buy an island? Buy a jet? I just fly wherever I want to fly? That's what's... No, nah, I better not. These riches, they're just... It's a root of evil. In Hollywood, these people who have all the money, Harvey Weinstein, I'll pay you, take care of you, I'll make you famous. Why? Because he has all the money. He has power. If you'll do this, exposing himself, abusing women, it is a root of evil. What about Epstein? Has a lot of money. Has a lot of power. Has a lot of houses. Has a lot of treasures. Has a lot of evil. Don't seek the money. It's the root of evil. It doesn't mean that money is wrong. It doesn't mean that riches is wrong. It means to seek these things for life are going to bring harm and hurt to you. So when a teacher is teaching you these things, just shut them off. No more. You preach Christ and preach Christ crucified because he's the greatest treasure I need. I don't need anything else. That's it. He was good enough for John the Baptist. He was good enough for the apostles. He was good enough for the early church. He's good enough for us. These teachers, last verse 10, they pierce themselves with pangs. It says, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs, sorrows. These teachers are never satisfied. They literally have jets that they fly around in. They literally stay in the best hotels in the world. They wear the best clothing, and they're still not satisfied. And they're going to teach you on how to have a blessed life now, even though they have all these physical things, but they themselves are not satisfied. We have to be foolish people to listen to these teachers. Either foolish or have a virus within us. A virus to not want God. A virus to not see the truth. And we need someone to heal us. Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who will heal us and show us the truth. And I pray that he's showing you the truth this morning. To be cautious of the hurtful, harmful teachers and listen to only those who will help. And he said in the very beginning in verse 2, teach and command these things, young Timothy, the things that align with Jesus Christ and the gospel message. So the harmful teachers will harmful you, harm you, but the helpful teachers will command and teach these things. Everyone this morning, I want to be a helpful teacher to you. And the only way that I can do that is to point you to Jesus Christ. That's it. I don't know where you're living. I don't know who you are. Not all of you. I don't know what you're doing. All I know is one thing. Christ Jesus died on the cross to save sinners, which I am the foremost. If he can save someone like me and put them in a the pulpit to preach and give them a privilege to baptize people from all different ages, he can certainly save you. He can certainly rescue you. And he certainly has a good plan for you, much more than what you are living in right now. So it is a call to follow Christ Jesus. Will you follow?